Hello, lovers of life. My name is LK. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for taking your time to watch and uh, to share. I, I believe you are sharing. Yeah, but uh, before I go down the line, let me just please encourage you to like, share, subscribe. Actually, number one is to subscribe you know and to leave your comment below because in you subscribing this will expand our uh, our channel and um, you know you liking it will inspire me to be like yeah and then leaving your comment below also it's it will help us it's like us interacting me interacting to you i will read your comment and i will respond to that yeah, remember uh, our channel or this channel is not it's not a channel whereby I'll just be sitting and talking talking to you, but it will be a channel that I will appreciate you also talking back to me. Yeah, uh, okay. One of the subscribers just asked me to share about uh, the power of attraction. The power of attraction. Yeah, the power of attraction. Um, okay, the power of attraction. You know, as a Christian. Um, I want to base this on, um, okay, since we have different various faith, uh, I might not uh, uh, mention the scriptures, but I want to base this on my understanding based on the word of God. You know, one of the word uh, speak of ask and it shall be given, ask and it shall be given. So meaning believe, meaning attract it and it shall come to you ask and it shall be given some people believe that if you send your words into the universe it will manifest that that you are, have told or commanded it to manifest and we christian i rather want to encourage you that we are spiritual beings living in the physical body remember it is your body that is of this earth but your spirit and soul it is of the spiritual realm so whatever you are trusting God for, whatever you want, it is actually in the spiritual realm. Might it be a car? Might it be a financial breakthrough? Might it be a debt cancellation? Might it be a healing? Whatsoever, whatsoever, the Bible says, whatsoever you shall ask, whatsoever. So which whatsoever only has a beginning, but there is no end. It is continuous whatsoever it is so large you cannot reach it you cannot measure it you cannot you know even like hug it it is very wide broad so whatsoever anything that seems to be that's what the bible says goes on it says nothing is impossible with god nothing is impossible with god whatsoever you ask him whatsoever you tell the universe to release whatsoever you call from the spiritual realm it will come whatsoever that is why be careful with what you are asking be careful be careful with what you are asking because it will definitely definitely manifest it will definitely manifest it will definitely come to pass whatsoever whatsoever power of attraction power of attraction and uh, somewhere the Bible speak of faith is the evidence of things not seen. No, faith is the evidence of, no, faith is the evidence of things. No, let me get my Bible here. Um, I think let's go to the book of um, Hebrew. Hebrew, the book of Hebrew. Um, the book of Hebrew, Hebrew, where are you? Yes, let's go to the book of Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 11, I believe so. Yes, yes, yes. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, the Bible says, my Bible, I don't know about your faith, but fortunately, uh, the principle is the same. The principle is the same. Faith is a confidence that, that faith is confidence. Faith is the confidence. Power of attraction is, you you know, for you to attract what you want, you must have confidence. For you to attract victory, you must have confidence. For you to attract restoration, you must have confidence. For you to attract a debt cancellation, you must have confidence. For you to attract a beautiful home, you know, like not home within, but a building, you must have confidence. 
You know, I was listening to the man of God, um, uh, the woman of God, prophetess Bibi, you know, angel, you know, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. She was speaking about when she met her husband, that prophet Hubert angel was carrying, you know, just the piece of the, the picture where they, they are now, the, 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 their current home, their current homes, you know, uh, you know, is, you know, it, it looked like that. And it was way back. And, 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 and he, 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 you know, she said that he told her that this is our house and she believed, she believed, you know, are you that person that when you tell people I'm going to buy a car, people will believe you? Or are you the people, the person that when you tell people they don't believe you? Here is the point. You don't need people to believe you. And when you get people that believe in you, praise God. It's actually a bonus. Be thankful, be grateful. But you don't need people to believe you first. You need to believe in what you are. You know, you need to believe in whom you are believing. You need to believe in the supplier of what you have, of what you want to have. And when you believe in that, then you believe in yourself. Any other person shouldn't matter. It is when we want people to believe in us, that is what you know, just come and paralyze everything. It nullifies our belief. It nullifies our faith. It nullifies what we believe for. So don't look for validation. Don't look for people to believe in you. Don't look for people to believe, you know, in the vision, in the dream that you have. No, just believe. Just believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. There's nothing I can tell you but do believe. So faith is the confidence that what we have hope for, that we, the thing that you have hope for will actually happen. So which means actually it will happen. There's no doubt about it. The moment you have faith, the universe, God, we release that that you are believing him for. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. You don't need see the, you don't need to see yourself out of that bed of the hospital. You don't need to see HIV out of your body. You don't need to to see a prophet to pray for you for the virus to go out. You don't need to see a pastor. You don't need to see uh, any other thing, person. You don't need to have evidence that HIV. For me, I think people that want to see evidence most of the time are people that don't. I don't know. You want to prove. You want to validate. But if you believe. Praise God. Praise God. You know, hear me well. I'm not here to speak against the generals of God. No, I'm here to speak to you. The manifestation of the result that you are negative, it is actually God responding to your faith. But as you keep on growing, the, the, the result of the doctor will not matter. But what will matter is what you believe and your faith in God and what you know he can do, what you believe he can do for you as an individual. Because, you know, you don't need to believe when you are only prayed for, when you are only prophesied for. You don't need to believe when the bank have approved your loan. You don't need to believe when uh, maybe your relationship is restored, when your job is restored, when you are promoted. You know, power of attraction is attracting even when you did not see it. Because faith is a confidence. Power of attraction is the confidence that we hope for. That will actually happen through their faith. The Bible says through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. So when you believe in faith, when you believe in the power of attraction, you get honored. Why do we have generals of God today? And the world is fighting them. This one is a false prophet. Prophet Bushir is a false prophet. Prophet Yubed is a false prophet. Prophet Tibi Joshua is a false prophet. They are not false. They have just discovered the secrets of attracting that which they want to see. Because remember, Jesus said, greater things will you do. Jesus, the King of glory, the manifestation of God in the human body. God speaking through the body of Jesus saying, greater things will you do. So which means in 30 years that he was on earth, he just did half. 
And he has left the rest, whether you bet angels, where he has left the rest, whether, you know, Bushiris, he has left the rest, whether T.B. Joshua, he has left the rest with, uh, you know, like my man of God, the, uh, the Kimanis and many others. And you sitting there, remember in the book of Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, the Bible say, let's go there before you say, I'm talking my own things. Let me tell you who you are. When you know who you are, then you will understand what I mean. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, are you there? Jeremiah 1 verse 5, the Bible says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before your mother and your father thought of attracting you to this earth, before they thought of getting you from the other universe to bring you on this earth, God knew that they were going to meet. Whether you were raped, a product of rape, whether you are a product of matrimony, matrimonial, whether you are a product where your father and your mother were together and by the time when you were to be born, your father died or mother or maybe your mother, you know, passed on while she was giving birth on you or a lot of things just, you know, happen, revolves around your birth, whether in childhood or whatsoever. The Bible say he knew you before. There was a time I was caught into myself and I was like, God, where have you been when this and that was happening? And I knew I was wrong. I was not supposed to ask him. You understand? So the Bible said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. You are a prophet, meaning you have the key. You have the power to call that car that you want. You have the power to call that house forth. You have the power to call that husband or that spouse that you want to get married to. You have the power to change your financial status. You have the power to live in the country of your birth or to immigrate. You have the power to be rich or to be poor. You have the power, you know, to change your situation. The Bible says that power and authority is given unto us. When Jesus died and went into the Hades, he went and took all the keys. You know why you are poor? It's because you don't know your rights. Why you are poor is because you have not befriended the owner of things. You have not discovered who you are. Jabez was a man born in the, you know, in the Bible days. Jabez was born, you know, in a situation. And that's why the mother named him after Jabez, meaning sorrow. And Jabez said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to say yes to the situation I was born in. Uh -uh. Some of you like to say, you know, I was born poor. Uh, I would just die poor. Oh, you know, my grandmother never drove a Range Rover. You know me, you know me, you know me. Ah, uh, and some people, you know, I don't have school, so I cannot reach this and that. I don't have what? You don't have school, but don't you have a brain? You have a brain. Don't you know how to pray? You have, you know how to pray. Jabez decided, no, 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 no. And he said, enlarge 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 i like that song that sang by um onesmos i think is an is a is a, is a gospel artist uh, from a prophetic um, channel enlarge my territory enlarge i am tired of crying i'm tired of begging i'm tired of tracking i'm tired of living in a shack i am tired of begging I'm tired of being in a cash loan. Let me start my own cash loan. I'm tired of being a security guard. Let me start the security company. Attract it. Call it. Call it. I'm tired to go out with people's husbands. Let God make me a wife and let me be a wife material. Let me attract. You know, you know, uh, sometimes I tell wives, I say, wives, when you see things are not well, you know, and your husband does not see you the way you are, attract the favor. Say, Lord, may I be, you know, uh, a fine favor with my husband. You're actually saying, Lord, I'm attracting favor from my husband and you behave nice. Some people will tell them, wow, you will be rich. Ah, uh, pastor, you don't know the family I come from. Mm -mm, they're actually poor. You behave like one. No. Let me take you to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. You are not poor, you are rich. Let me tell you, from today you will know who you are. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, you know that. 
For I know the plans I have for you. When you say you are poor, when you say you are a beggar, when you say things, you know, speak death, it means you are opposing the plan of God and in itself it is a sin. Attract what you want. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. You are given. The plan of God is for you to have future and hope. When you attract what you want, you have hope. You must have hope and you must have patience and you must believe. Okay. So the power of attraction is a very beautiful place to be. Power of attraction. Let me just share with you with a few minutes that are remains. Let me share with you. I don't know. I'm so addicted to power of attraction. I'm so addicted to faith in God. Let me share with you recently, a few of recent uh, testimony and past testimony. So I think it was maybe a week ago. I woke up uh, and I had uh, two, um, two um, how, will, how will I call this person? I have, uh, I have two nursing mothers in the house. And uh, you know, when you have two nursing mothers, you must have enough food and so on. And, uh, you know, uh, and as a mother, you don't want your children visiting you and there must be concern of buying food and things like that, you know, as a mother, you know. So is it that they have money, they had money, but you know, you eat eaten food who, whose food does not get finished, even at your house food get finished. So I woke up and I came, I stood on the cupboard of the food. I look at it and I don't know, as I said, I'm an addict of, if there's something I'm addicted to is faith in God, is power of attraction. I look at the cupboard and in my spirit, I'm like, you better attract food. I think it's only 30 minutes past somebody was calling me and I'm like, goodness, what does this person want to do? And this person kept saying, pastor, I want to come. And I'm like, let me just, you know, I was, I had to finish, uh, just, we, we were going to swap up and I thought if she come and I'm not done, we're not going. And, you know, and I did not want to cause comfort, you know, because, you know, my husband would, like, would think, ah, wives, they are not finishing women that they don't finish fast. So I was trying to to keep my side clean, you know, from on his side to finish fast. And here somebody want, wants to come. And here is the secret. If we have prayed and somebody is calling you or you hear a voice go to somebody's house, please do not resist. God speak in his own ways. So this person decided to come herself at home. Remember, I stood in front of a cupboard and there was no food. And when she came at home, she gave me a rolled money. And I was, and also in my spirit, I felt like I want to give her eggs because somebody that I know very well and I had a little bit of more eggs. I was like, let me give her one tray of eggs, just, you know, out of solidarity and love. And I did, you know, I was also going to sow a seed. So she came and she dropped some notes in my hands. Remember, there was no food and we we're going to swap up. Remember, my husband thought I had money. She, he thought I have money for fuel because I'm like, he may, he appointed me to be the minister of finances. Okay. I, I embraced that position. So there was no money in my wallet, no money for fuel, no money to go and eat. There's no money to buy food on that very day. So this woman of God came and dropped money and it was a thousand Namibian dollars. And that day I was the most richest, you know, wife, mother, grandmother. So we went to do our shopping and before the sunset, we had dinner i have just adopted that scripture that says do not worry yourself about anything will worry add a cubic on whatever no worry will only bring you depression frustration it will make you ugly it will make you grow old it will make you bitter worry is not good i looked at the beds and the other time we went to the shopping mall and i look at the beds uh you know when the car drove during the night there's this insect that's got stuck in the front of the car, those beds end that day and uh, they got them so food there. And I was like, oh, you know, beds know how to get food for themselves. They are not worried where it come from. And you don't see birds dying of stress or depression. So that is how you should be. So what, when I stood in front of the cupboard, I attracted the food and the food came. I remember the other time I was praying, I was saying my water was closed for a long time. For four years, I've been getting water from the neighbors. And one day I came to the tap, I stood on the tap and I said, you tap, you better release water. Next time, this time around, I don't want to fetch water at the neighbors. 
So yes, there's those things that happen here and there where maybe the water got closed for a week and the neighbors help you. Yes. But I said, I want to be in charge of my water. So one day when I came to sleep, I just had a vision. The tap got open. So I woke up and I, I, I came and I opened the tap. And when I opened the tap for a whole year, I did not close. So, and then one day I was just called. Remember, I, I just, you know, spoke to the Lord about the water. I stood at the tap and I called the water. After a year, I was, you know, granted favor at the, at the, our council office here. And I came and my water got open. And just what I saw in the vision, water was opened. The, the tap after one year, when the water got open, that's how it gushed out. And uh, also, I also was praying for one of my debts. It was 3,000 something. And uh, I prayed for those debt and I said, God, I was, you know, when I do my things, I do my things. When I went there, the debt was only 600 and something. <laughs> you must be crazy in God. You must have a big, a big picture about who God is. God is bigger than Hitler. God is bigger than Idi Amin. God is bigger than Osama bin Laden. God is bigger than the greatest nation in this world because he is the one who has made the nation. He is the one who has made the one who has made the weapon. He is a bigger God. Attract whatever you want and it will come to pass. And one of the things that I trusted God for, a phone that I'm busy um, uh, videographing now, and God just gave us in a mysterious way. And the other time I was just praying over our debts and uh, I called the person and the debt was this supposed to be a 3,000, even 4,000. When I called the person, the person said, blah, di, da, da, da. And the debt was brought down to a thousand where we thought of, no, let's add for them a 300. It was 1,007 just to say, thank you. <laughs> so power of attraction power of attraction. So attract what you want and it will come to pass. So if, if you want a husband, buy a shirt, buy a suit, buy shoes, you know, greet him every day, whether the husband is available or whether he is to come or the husband is uh, being chased out of the house by the devil, greet that man every morning. Say, good morning, honey. Good morning, my head. Good morning, my master. And the person will come. I remember a many, many things that has happened my life in my life, but the day when I discovered that I have the power to attract whatever I want, by the grace of God, the Lord has been so, so faithful. Why? Because my eyes are now open and my ears can now hear his voice and my mouth can now speak life. And my heart is filled with his word and my mind is filled with him. What is your mind filled with? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you keeping in your heart? Power of attraction power of attraction you know i would just wake up and i would just need something and before the sunset somebody would just be like maybe a client will just come by and i'll do the hay and we have gotten something to eat that is just and i told god if you can provide a 25 dollar if you can provide a 150 dollar you are bigger than that i'm telling you power of attraction you know what for me if i lay my Mind onto something. It's just a matter of time before it manifests. Power of attraction. But listen, while you are attracting what you want, if you are, if you want to be rich, take up courses on how to uh, handle when those wealth are coming, when those riches will come. If you are attracting marriage, you know, learn how to be a marriage. A married woman learn how to be a married man whatever you are attracting so just lay your mind on it lay your hand on it walk into it and it will come to pass what is that that you want to attract what is that that you want to attract like the day when I just realized the Bible says silver and gold is of the Lord. The thousand cow on the hill is the Lord. The earth and the fullness of it is of the Lord. And I am of God. And whatever is born of God overcome the world. So I am an overcomer. 
power of attraction is not limited by where you grow up, but it is limited but by your faith. And it is, you know, celebrate or let me say it is, it is brought to manifestation by what you believe and you keep on believing. Uh, what is some of the stuff that I just attracted? Um, what is that that I just attracted? Yeah, one of, um, yes, let me tell you the, the, the last one. Yeah, uh, my first, I, I'll still do a video my first time on the plane. So um, there the, the, the come a, the, a day, you know, my eldest daughter just, our eldest daughter just gave birth in South Africa and I had to go and the devil was just trying here and there. And uh, yes, my, really my desire, I, I want to fly, but the finances were just not there. And, uh, and remember when you, when you are, when you want what, that thing that you want, don't worry where you where where you will get the money. Don't worry how it will come. You just believe and stand on the word of God. Speak life. Do what you can do and let him do the rest. But do it in faith and in belief. So the day when the day came, you know, my son-in-law sent that uh, and the wife they sent the ticket and the ticket came. And listen, uh here is the enemy wanted to abort that day that you know vision or that dream or the manifestation of that so we left home on time we left home on time when we came to swako came at the bob to get some money the bob machine atm machine the, the machine was just things were just not the machine was just behaving differently i was like wow devil spirit of delay you are here mm -hmm. no 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 not me so when we the time when the plane's supposed to take off, we were still 30, 30 kilometers away from the airport. And uh, my husband, you know, got, you know, a little bit, you know, disturbed, you know, because he's concerned. And I really understand him. And I'm also concerned. And, you know, the two wrongs cannot correct anything. I was like, he's the head of the house. He's angry. Okay. Arguing here. And uh, I got myself into a different world, in the spiritual world. And I said, God, I'm attracting that plane not to fly. I'm speaking the spiritual realm now. Let there be a delay. There must be a delay. And when I called, and, 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 you, and you know what? Uh, I cannot explain that day. I cannot explain the atmosphere. Neither did my husband, was my husband aware of what was going on. But I was, I was, I was just somewhere. And the people that came on my mind was the two prophets. It was prophet Hubert Angel. It was a uh, prophet Bushiri. And I was just like the God of these two prophets. You know, I was just talking, talking. And, uh, when, when we were 10 kilometers before the airport, we called and they said the plane has closed its door. And I said that not the plane that I was going to get in, but naturally it is a plane I was going to get in. So. We came there and I said, I'm going and I don't know what happened. I will not tell you what happened naturally. I will really not tell you, but it happened that that plane did not exist. That was closed because that plane was still in South Africa. Naturally, they were saying the plane is in Warfish Bay. It has closed about to take off. And I said, not the plane that I'm going to get off. What I was attracting, not uh, the thing of me being left by plane. And uh, I hope you understand what I mean. So I went, I came and I stood and yeah, I, when time came, I think after two hours and, we're, and it happened that I was not, the, they said I was the only one. It happened that four people were actually late, delayed. So that is what God can do when you trust him in a bigger, bigger measure. So then I got in the plane and, uh, I, you know, because I attracted that day and I said, plane, I'll get on you. You know, gently, not sweaty, sweaty, gently, nicely. And uh, so, yeah, I will share with you, I think, part two about my story the first time in the plane. Yeah, but I will leave you with this, that power of attraction. Speak whatsoever without wavering, without doubting, and uh, you will actually get what you want. It will come. It will come. But be careful whom you are sharing it with. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment below. As for me, Launa K is shalom.